In December, Donald Trump's son-in-law and Winklevoss twin reject Jared Kushner sought direct secret communication with Vladimir Putin. So there it is, right? That's the, uh, the collusion there. So uh, is it finally impeachment time? Ah, uh, well, hold on, actually. I need to stop pretending I understand this. Ugh, I'm gonna have to actually read some articles. I'll be right back. Okay. No. Duh, that makes total sense. I'm smart. Howdy gang, every time there's a new revelation regarding Trump and Russia, it's like another piece of the puzzle being revealed. But instead of it being a piece of the puzzle that you were actually looking for, it's some new weird piece of the puzzle with a flugelhorn on it. How's the flugelhorn involved? I thought this was a dog puzzle. So, new puzzle piece, Jared Kushner. During the presidential transition, Kushner reportedly sought to establish a secret direct link of communication with the Kremlin. In doing so, he ended up meeting with Sergei Gorkov of the Venice Economy Bank, a financial institution with ties to Russian intelligence. It also just so happens to be under sanction by the United States. And also, I'm pretty sure Venice Economy Bank is a German word, meaning that feeling when you realize that being the president's son-in-law doesn't qualify you to dictate international policy. Or do anything. But does this matter? Eh, kinda. Here's the deal. Jared Kushner seeking secret communications with the Kremlin is not illegal. It just sounds hella shady, especially considering there are all these other Trump people with their own shady dealings with Russia. And it doesn't help that pretty much anything involving Russia seems shady. It's basically Shadistan, or Shadenia, or the union of spooky shady Russians. But when it comes to the Russia stuff, it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. When Michael Flynn resigned as national security advisor, it wasn't because he had talked to the Russian ambassador during the campaign. It was because he had misled Mike Pence about it, claiming that they had only exchanged holiday pleasantries. Yeah, that's plausible. Just a casual Russian ambassador and a chill-ass national security advisor shooting the shit about Santa. So, uh, what'd you get your kids this year? Crippling depression and hopelessness. It was a re-gift. So now, on top of everything else, Jared Kushner sought a secret direct line of communication with the Kremlin. That's not proof of any illegal activity, but you'd think with all this suspicion about Russia collusion, they would try to keep this sort of behavior to a minimum. Like, if your significant other believes that you are cheating on them at a golden corral, it's not illegal for you to come home at 3 a.m. smelling like a made-to-order sirloin steak. It's just really dumb. Not going to golden corral in the first place, though. That's really smart. I mean, all you can eat dinner for 929? Come on. Finally, what will happen next? Well, there's already a special prosecutor investigating the connections between Trump and Russia. So now Jared Kushner will likely become a prominent figure in that investigation. But it remains to be seen how this will affect his role in the White House. Trump can't fire him as son-in-law. I guess he could try, it would be in character. But I suspect that Jared Kushner's role in the White House will fade out the same way that it faded in, unofficially and with little fanfare. For what it's worth, Donald Trump released a statement on Sunday reading, quote, Jared is doing a great job for the country. He just didn't say which country. Hey, if you like this video, please make it internet official by liking it on YouTube. You can also leave a comment regardless of whether you like the video. Plenty of people who have not liked my videos before went ahead and commented on them anyway. I highly encourage you to do so. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. Additionally, if you want to know what I've been up to the last few months, I've got a couple other projects that I encourage you to check out. I've been doing a podcast called The Daily Show Weekly with my friend Vic Shuttie. We're watching The Daily Show from the very beginning back in 1999, the Jon Stewart era that is, and we're talking about every last segment. So if you're into that sort of thing, check it out. It's on iTunes under Hail Satire with Vic Shati. He's also posting them on YouTube as well. Additionally, I've been making videos with Fordham's comedy club, Stove's Cabin Crew. So if you want to check out the videos I've been doing for that, I've also got those. See you next time.